Hey, what's up? So I'm going to show you how I made this quick little animation that I posted on my TikTok, which if you're not already following, consider doing so. So today I'm going to teach you how to use Rococo Video to create free mocap that you can put on any 3D character you want. You're going to learn how to prepare a model to be rigged, how to rig a quick skeleton, how to generate your motion capture and export it, how to retarget it onto your 3D character, and then how to clean up that animation. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to be working with this really dope Spider-Man model that's created by Yugo 9 p one Bro, this guy makes some insanely good 3D models of Spider-Man and like all the different Spider-Man we've seen on the big screen. And the best part is they're free. So definitely go check this guy out. Give him some love. I mean, he has some just incredible looking models. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly delete this skeleton here. And okay, wow. He's massive. What's really cool about this model is it has eyes that you can actually animate with shape keys. Really, 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 really cool. Now I wanna keep these, so I've separated them into their own little mesh object here. And I've just put them back in place on the model. It's not perfect, but I mean, it'll get the job done. Now we're eventually gonna take these eyes and put them on the rigged skeleton model of Spider-Man instead. So that's why I separated them for now. Now we have just the Spider-Man mesh with no skeleton in a nice neutral pose, literally perfect, love it, it's great. So we're gonna go up here to file, export, FBX. Spidey, Spidey, no rig. We're gonna limit it to selected objects and we're just gonna make sure mesh is ticked. Just wanna make sure it only exports just that mesh. And we can also just do copy so it copies over the textures too. And export. Once we have your model exported, it's time to open up AccuRig and automatically rig a skeleton to it. So we're just gonna open up AccuRig, you can see right here, ActorCore AccuRig. So ActorCore lets you automatically rig any sort of 3D character you can imagine or want to rig. And it's really intuitive, really fast, really easy. The rig is amazing, in my opinion, it's way better than Mixamo because you have control over the finger placements. It's absolutely insane. And what's really cool is once when you have your character rigged in AccuRig, you can then upload it to their little cloud database thing where you can then use their ActorCore motion library, which is basically just their huge library and collections of motion capture animations. And so you can apply those animations to the 3D character that you then just rigged. It's insane. I love it. It's amazing. This is all free. It's absolutely incredible. So here I am in AccuRig. I'm just going to open up the file that we exported right here spidey no rigged and boom here we are so all we have to do is orient it so that the front is facing us and that this line make sure this line is directly in the center everything looks good to me so i'm just gonna go down here to the bottom right and i'm gonna click rig body so it's doing its thing it's doing a bunch of math and stuff and boom look at that it has all these placements here now if you look over here on the right you have a preview of like where these placements are supposed to be and if you hover over one it tells you it gives you a better idea of where that placement should be so i'm just gonna go ahead and move this one over here just a little bit closer to the center in fact i can actually use symmetry like this and i can move both elbows so they're a bit more centered and more in the elbow joint than i think i'm gonna move these actually those look fine actually i'm gonna move this up maybe just a little bit these in maybe a tiny bit adjust the knees i mean honestly it does a pretty dang good job i doubt that these modifications i'm making are gonna have any real impact but I'm gonna do it anyway. So this looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and rig the right hand. It's asking me how many fingers does Spider-Man have? Spider-Man has five fingers. He's a human, so he has five fingers. It's gonna do more math and stuff. Voxelizing right hand. I don't even know what that means. And there we go, look at this. It has automatically placed a bunch of finger joints here for us. And again, same as before, it shows us where the joints are supposed to be placed. If you hover over one, it shows you exactly where. It's really, really cool. And also if you hover over one of the joints in the thumb, it'll highlight in a darker green color the rest of the thumb joints. So sometimes for characters that have like maybe not as many fingers or something like that, or a weird hand pose, sometimes the finger joints can get a little discombobulated and messed up and then you have to manually put them in place. But it takes a few extra minutes. It's not a big deal. Just wanna let you know that sometimes it's not 100% perfectly accurate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move these uh, fingertip joints. They always go off the edge for some reason. I don't know why. So I'm just gonna move them in a little bit. 
And you also see that this one right here, this little triangular cone here, it says the cone should be perpendicular to the thumbnail. So this is a tiny bit off to me, so I'm just gonna move it a little bit by moving this little blue wheel right here. It highlights yellow when I hover over it. And just move that around until it looks about perpendicular. That looks good to me. Sick. That looks pretty dang good. So what's what I like to do is over here there's a mirror options. You can mirror left to the right or right to the left. So this is the right hand here. So I'm gonna mirror the right hand over to the left. Now, if all is symmetrical, if I go ahead and click over here on this left hand tab right here up at the top right, if I click that, if the model is perfectly symmetrical, which I believe it is, then all the joints place automatically right there as well. That's all good and fine and dandy to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and right here in the bottom right, and I'm gonna click finalize character. It's doing a bunch more math. It's placing the automatic weight, weight paint maps and stuff, and it's weighing the skeleton to the mesh as well as the fingers and uh yeah let's see what it spits out here we go this is this is our eyeless spider-man moving around look at him he's just kind of doing a little standard idle animation right now but what you can do is preview different motions and, and stuff so right here they have a body tab and they have different poses and animations like different male poses female poses and stuff they also have like that looks that looks kind of cool they also have a little animation that you can preview so here he is just doing some stretches you know, hands on the hip, that looks great. Oh my gosh. Look at that, Just stretching that back. Oh, my back! They also have a hand animation that you can do. So you can zoom in, get real close and tight on the hands here, make sure they look okay. Zoom in his hands, let's see the fingers. Let's see the fingers, how do they look? That's not bad, that's not bad. Look at those finger animations, pretty nice, pretty nice. Now, another thing I wanna point out is that you can actually adjust the rotation of some of these bones here. So usually I like to take this, the upper arms here, and I like to rotate them on the Z axis out a little bit, but this automatic rig did a really good job and I actually like it how it is right now. But usually they're in a little tighter than I would like, so I often come down here to the upper right hand arms or sometimes the collarbones, and I make the right one negative five, and I make the left one five. And that kind of just like adjusts his arms out a little bit, but honestly, like I said, this this one did a really, really good job. So once when you've tweaked some of the bones and AccuRig and stuff, and you rotated them around how you like, and you're ready to export, this is how you do it. So you go down here to the bottom right, you click export, export. They have, they have many different ways that you can export. You can export an FBX file, you can export a USD file, which is, I guess, used for NVIDIA Omniverse. I haven't messed around with that if you want me to. I mean, I can, I guess. But they also have it where you can save this as an avatar to use an iClone 8, which is another one of their softwares used to animate characters and stuff. So I'm just gonna export an FBX. And they have a lot of different applications that you can choose. We're just gonna use Blender. It's asking me if I wanna save the textures and stuff. I don't really want to because I already have the textures in Blender, so I can just reapply those, so it's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and down here and click export. It's gonna bring up this. So down on my files, Spidey No Rig. Well, actually, this is Spidey Rig. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Save and exports it out. Now that you have your model rigged, it's time to create your motion capture animation. So we're gonna jump over here to Rococo Video. You can go to rococo.com slash product slash video or just in their little products tab here, Rococo Video. And it'll take you here and it's this is, this is what it is. It's free AI motion capture. And then once we're on the page, you're gonna click try it out. Now you're gonna have to use your Rococo ID if you don't already have one. You sign in, create one, it's easy and free. So I already have one, so I'm just gonna sign in. So in Rococo Video, you can create different scenes for projects and stuff. Now to upload a clip or record a clip, you just click create scene. I'm gonna name this tutorial. And you can record using your device camera or a local video file. So you just upload a video clip or you record with your webcam. If you don't have a webcam, you can just shoot it with your phone and then upload the clip to Rococo Video. So once when you have your clip uploaded and you're happy with it, all you gotta do is just click right here, turn into animation. And it's gonna do more math and stuff and it's gonna do a bunch of AI junk and it's gonna spit out an animation. Now over here on the right, it says that Rococo Studio is their software to process and clean their motion capture data. So what you're gonna need to do is download Rococo Studio. So you click download here, open up a new tab, and then you just choose the right one for your platform. If you're on Windows, Rococo Studio Beta for Windows. They also have Legacy, but I think for this, you're gonna, for Rococo Video, you're gonna want Rococo Studio Beta. So go ahead and click download there. 
and install it. Okay, so here I am in Rococo Studio, and if I go over here to Project, scroll down to Rococo Video, and I have my Spider-Man Dance video. Double click that to open it up. Here's the new recording over here. I'm gonna right click it, set target actor, and it's set to Jiffy already. Great, awesome. So now, if I just double click the recording over here, and here is my animation now one thing i've noticed is that it likes to lean the character forward a little bit i'm not sure why it does that but it's okay i'm going to show you how to fix it when we clean up the animation so let's say you're happy with the animation i'm pretty happy with this i was pretty happy with this for the video so i'm going to go ahead and go over here to the export tab on the right i'm going to export it as an fbx file you can export it with the body mesh i've started to not do it because i ended up just deleting it anyway but sometimes it can be useful for reference skeleton preset i'm just going to choose human ik i'm going to export it as 30 fps i choose include reference pose it's basically just a t pose on frame zero and then to set your file destination click these three little dots i'm going to choose my downloads here boom okay and then you click export clips and it exports it out now back in blender i'm going to go to file import FBX. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the rig that we created in AccuRig. I'm going to scroll down here to Armature and I'm going to click Automatic Bone Orientation and then I'm going to click Import FBX. So here's our Spider-Man. He has no eyes, no materials, which is fine. I'm going to click on the mesh really quick and I'm just going to set the material. Let me just bring his eyes back. Sick. So now we have our rig Spider-Man in Blender. Now it's time to import the motion capture and then retarget it. I'm going to go to File, Import, FBX and new recording two this is it again i'm going to scroll down here to armature i'm going to click automatic bone orientation it's already checked on and import fbx i'm going to hit in and i'm going to go down here to the rococo add-on here if you don't have this then you can download it it's free i'll leave a link in the description below so i'm going to go over here to the retargeting drop down in the right and i'm going to click source our source is the reference that is the motion capture right here reference and then the target is going to be armature, which is created, which is the rig that we made in AccuRig. And then I'm going to click build bones list. Now it probably automatically won't line up perfectly for you sometimes. Now it does for me because I've done this before, but you basically just want to go through and make sure all the bones are mapped right. Okay. And see this right here is a perfect case of an oopsie. So it has left arm is left upper arm. And then right here, left forearm is left upper arm again. That's wrong. We don't want that. We want the left forearm so we choose that there we go left hand left hand great index one two three that looks great middle one two three great pinky one two three awesome ring one two three perfect thumb one two three and they're all left perfect awesome so we have the neck which is neck twist of one that's fine the head the right shoulder is the clavicle right arm upper arm right forearm forearm Right hand, right hand, index one, two, three, middle one, two, three, pinky one, two, three, ring one, two, three, and thumb one, two, three. Awesome. Has the up leg, which is the the thigh, the left the the leg is the calf, the foot is the foot, toe base, toe base, thigh, calf, foot, toe base. Awesome. Everything looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and click retarget animation and see what it gives us. Here we are. Now something looks a little bit off. His arms are all jacked up. What the heck is wrong? Why is that? Well, this is because of the rest pose that our Spider-Man animation is in. Now, if you look right here, he's not in a T pose anymore. Our reference is in a T pose. Spider-Man is in an A pose. So that's essentially what the, what's wrong with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and control Z all that all that that we just did so now spider-man is back in his t pose but it's not his rest pose if i go over here into edit mode you can see up oh, spider-man goes right back to his a pose because that's his rest pose that's his default pose that's his default position so we need to make this t pose his default position now an e quick and easy way to do that is using the cats add-on for blender which is also free link to it down in the description below now it's used for like vr chat and stuff i don't know what all this is at all i have no idea but i just use it to change the rest poses of all my characters so if i go ahead and i select the spider-man armature here and i click start pose mode puts him right back to his default position and i'm just going to go ahead and click on a skeleton i'm going to go to viewport display in front and i'm also going to go down to the armature tab here viewport display and i'm going to change it to a stick it just makes things a bit easier for me to see and so basically what you want to do is you just click on the bones and you kind of just rotate them up 
so that they kind of match the T pose. So I'm gonna spend a couple minutes doing this. You do the same. Now, if you click on a bone and then you rotate it over and it's not rotating the whole, f the whole arm, uh, all you gotta do is just press H to hide it and then you grab the right bone and it's great. And there we go. I sort of kind of got Spider-Man in a T-Pose. The more time you spend on this and getting the rest pose right, the more the better your retarget will be. But let's say you're happy with this. I'm decently happy with it. Looks This looks fine to me for a T-Pose. You can spend more time getting the fingers just right and stuff if you want. Uh, but I usually don't. I usually just clean that up manually. And then I go over here and I click Apply as Rest Pose. So now we go back to Rococo and we click rest and retarget animation. And now if we look at our animation, we have Spider-Man doing the motion capture animation just fine and dandy. Look at that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get his eyes sorted and back on the actual Spider-Man mesh. Okay, dope, I got them situated real nice and pretty on his face. They look great, they look just like they're part of the suit. Awesome, so how do we attach these? Well, I'm just gonna use a little child of constraint here. I'm gonna set the target to the armature and then I'm gonna click the head as the bone, set inverse, and now if we look, the eyes are following them. Just fine and dandy, we can still click on them and adjust the open close however we wish and animate this if we want. And there we have it. We have our Spider-Man doing his, uh, doing the motion capture animation. He's still leaning forward. That's fine. I'm gonna show you how to clean up all these little inconsistencies and things that you might not like in the animation. So I'm just gonna go to this little standard frame right here and I'm just gonna click on the skeleton here and I'm gonna go down here to the bottom left. I'm gonna click on this little icon here. I'm gonna change the workspace at the bottom here to the nonlinear animation editor. And then you can see our armature right here. And then you can see all these keyframes here. I'm just gonna make this in action. It's basically like a boom, I've solidified the animation. It's like a movie clip that I can edit. Over here on the right, I'm gonna change blending to combine. If you don't see it, just hit in on your keyboard. It'll bring up this tab here. I'm gonna go back to the timeline, drag it down so I can see, make sure the skeleton is still selected. I'm gonna go into pose mode. Click A to select all the bones in the skeleton. Go over here to the object properties. And I'm just gonna keyframe location, rotation, and even scale, just in case I wanna change any of these properties here. And then you can see it created a keyframe down here. I'm also gonna turn on auto keying by clicking this little button right here, boom. Move this keyframe over to the beginning. Go over maybe 10 frames or so. And I'm gonna try to find the hip bone. Let's see, is this the root bone? It is, so I'm gonna rotate them over about maybe just so he's standing about upright. That looks pretty good to me. And you can spend some serious time tweaking these legs if you want. Uh, but again, let's say you don't like one of the, one of these little arm bends here. Well, we, well, what you can do is you can, since this bone is already keyed, you can just rotate it over. Oh, grab the wrong one there. Whoops. Got to hide and select the right one and you rotate it over and boom, now his arm is rotated in in place and then I can make it go over here if I really really want to and do some weird wacky stuff so here it is in place looking good here and then he just rotates over and his arm is broke oh no yeah I don't like that so we're not gonna do that maybe I want this one to go down rotate over like this maybe in a little bit not bad and so yeah you can really go through and really fine tune all these bones and animations and stuff. You can even do the same thing with the fingers if you want. I did that for a split second. I made his hands do the little Spider-Man thing. So, I mean, you can really spend some serious time on this. But right out of the box, this is really great. This is really, really, really great. This is an amazing alternative to do free motion capture. It's suitless, you don't have to do anything. You just record yourself doing the motion and do a little bit of manual work and you have something that is totally great and usable. So there you have it. In the future, I'm gonna be making more in-depth tutorials and workflow videos about my motion capture process, specifically in Unreal Engine 5 and MetaHumans for my Batman Beyond CG film. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Also, if you learned something new, feel free to click the like button down below. It helps push it out to other people who might be interested in the video. If you have any questions, comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching and be sure to follow me on all my socials linked below and I'll catch you in the next one.